Welcome to all of you joining us from LinkedIn, YouTube, and La Vanguardia. Remember that this session will be available for viewing on demand on your LinkedIn page as soon as it is over. And I also welcome all of your comments, which you can post during the session or during our Q&A. My name is Christoph Zott. I'm a professor of entrepreneurship at Yesa Business School, and I'm joining you from our Barcelona campus, which is a little bit deserted these days, but it's as beautiful as ever. What I would like you to take away from our session this afternoon are three main things about what entrepreneurs can teach us, how we can react positively to crisis. The first thing is the importance of adopting an entrepreneurial mindset. Stay positive and keep looking for opportunities. Challenges and opportunities are two sides of the same coin. That's a fundamental truth about entrepreneurship. And we can see this daily in the actions of hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs all around the globe who do not give, do not give up in the face of adversity, um, who continue and um, who do not let themselves get overwhelmed by crisis. So you yourself, please, don't get overwhelmed by the current crisis. Focus on the actionable opportunities that come with it. So that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is as important. And that's don't forget about your so-called soft skills. They are crucial. I'm talking here about something as soft as emotions. That's something I've learned through my research. It's very, very important because uncertainty evokes anxiety and fear. And these are very powerful emotions. So you need to do all you can in order to manage your own emotions and pay attention to your own emotions as well as those around you. Um, because by doing so, you give yourself the psychological resources that allow you to be resilient in the face of crisis and you encourage others and motivate others to keep helping you, which is as important. Then the third thing um, that I would like to share with you is now is a very good time to rethink not just what you're doing, but also how are you doing business. Take a step back and reflect, look at the big picture and think about how you should change your business model to adapt it to a new tomorrow. So now more than ever is the time for business model innovation. In fact, those are the three main lessons that I would like to share with you. I wanted to give them to you up front, and now let me um, go a little bit further into details. So the first thing I would like to share with you are a number of stories from YESE entrepreneurs. You know that at YESE we embrace the case method for teaching. I also use this in my research, and I have assembled a number of um, cases here, very short caselets and, and, and stories that um, will allow you to appreciate a little bit how entrepreneurs have reacted or are reacting to the current crisis. First, um, this is the story of the, 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 the case of um, Ivan Rodriguez and Luis Paris, who are ESA EMBA students, graduated in 2011, and they founded a company called Parklick. This is a company that provides reservation solution for car parks. I wrote a case on them. Um, and you can imagine that, um, you know, in this time when personal transportation is basically close to non-existing and nobody wants to park their car anymore in, in public garages, um, this, it's a very difficult uh, time for such a business. And before teaching this case a few weeks ago in the MBA program, I reached out to Ivan and to Luis to ask how they were doing and how they were coping with the crisis. And that was just at the beginning of it. And Ivan and Luis wrote uh, something back to me, which which was very remarkable. They said, believe it or not, after we cursed and reluctantly accepted the situation that we're in literally with zero sales, both of us are thrilled with the opportunities that lay ahead of us due to the COVID crisis, such as competitors going bankrupt, M&A opportunities, reducing costs, finding and removing inefficiency, uh, rockstar hirings, time out to catch competitors, et cetera, et cetera. And they said, this does not only help the PL in the short, in the middle and in the long term, but it also helps the morale of the team. So despite the severe disruption in their business that these two entrepreneurs are currently experiencing, 
they keep up their entrepreneurial mindset, uh, their belief in a better future, and their focus on building the business. Second example. Second example is Anna Maikes, the CEO and founder of Neuroelectrics, which um, is a company based out of Barcelona, um, used to be known as Star Labs, and as a, a YES alumna, 2015 in the AMP program, and she gave a talk um, in the Global Leadership Series uh, at YES two weeks ago, and I found just very remarkable of how she started out her talk. The very, very first thing that she said, the very first thing indeed, was that she said she was remained optimistic um, and positive and that she had already seen so many opportunities uh, due to COVID-19. Now that's not what you would expect um, an executive to, to say in the face of such an unprecedented um, time uh, on crisis. Um, and um, when I reached out to Anna after the talk, she explained to me a little with a little further detail what she meant and she, she gave me an example, she said, Look, right now, the Food and Drug Administration in the United States allows us um, to send um, home our devices to patients who are reluctant to go to the hospital because they're afraid, um, and so they can, they can receive treatment at home. Um, I think I forgot to tell you what, what this company does, um, and so just let me, let me, um, let me say that. Um, the company is producing electrical devices um, that stimulate the brain and thereby um, help treat brain illnesses like epilepsy, depression, or um, dementia or Alzheimer. So, you know, the whole kind of crisis speeds up, for Anna at least, speeds up um, the, uh, uh, the development of, um, uh, of, her, of her products. Um, and it provides some sort of a revolution in, in telemedicine um, and, uh, uh, and, and health. The third example um, I wanted to give you is an alumnus of our MBA program, Bruno Lea, who graduated in 2014. Um, after a while, he led, launched a search fund to acquire the French um, distribution of, of Haas, which is a, a machine tool manufacturing company. And um, Bruno participated recently with a project uh, in, a, in an MBA course of mine. Um, and um, likewise, you know, I kind of, I, I, I asked Bruno, so, you know, how do you cope? And, and Bruno said, look, you know, it's, it's not very fortunate that, you know, a couple of months after buying the business, we're hit by this crisis. And certainly the COVID crisis will um, not be easy, it will be long, and it will represent a new normal after the crisis um, that will be different from, from the one that, 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 that there was before. But um, as a result, I have to take risks and I have to do things that you know, have never been done before. So he said, it's time for, for me, it's time for innovation, for digitalization, for investing in uh, technologies. We need to become more digital and able to offer digitized and customized solutions. So. If we look at these very different companies, parking solutions, um, uh, medical devices, um, machine distribution, what they all have in common is this kind of relentless focus on opportunity and refusing to get brought down um, in terms of morale and in terms of mindset by the crisis. Of course, what one would normally expect is something like this, which is you know, firefighting in action. And um, of course, these entrepreneurs have had their dose of it, which is cost cutting, hiring freezes, uh, emergency financing, focusing on the core business, increasing, improving operational efficiency, postponing investment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the entrepreneurs that I've just mentioned don't stop there. They don't stop there. They say, you, and this is very important. We have to do this, yes, but, um, we cannot afford to lose our focus on the opportunity. So you might say, hmm, yeah, these entrepreneurs, truly special people with a special DNA, with special character traits, eternally optimistic, super creative, innovative, daredevils, risk takers, they love risk. Um, nothing can bring them down. They're a very special breed of people. Now, People like Zuckerberg, Richard Branson, 
Anita Ruddick, Elon Musk, um, and, and many others who are you know, very famous um, as entrepreneurs. Now, you may be thinking implicitly, I'm not like one of them. I'm not, I'm Anthea Ortega. Um, so, you know, what can I learn from these people? They seem to be superhuman. Now, two things. Number one, there's nothing wrong with getting inspired by them. No problem with that. And number two, you should reconsider um, what we, about what we know about what truly makes them stand out and what makes them special. It is not their DNA. It is not their character traits, but it's their mindset and it's their behaviors that come from this mindset. Behavior such as resilience. Resilience means simply don't give up when the going gets tough. When the headwinds are strong, keep sailing through. Let me share with you one of my favorite stories about resilience. This is not from an entrepreneur, but um, from a very famous explorer called Ernest Shackleton, who was sailing in the Antarctic and you know, discovering, um, exploring the Antarctic at, in, at the beginning of the, the last century. And um, his ship was aptly named Endurance and he, you know, he and his crew had very bad luck because one day before reaching shore, shore they got trapped in pack ice um, and the ship never was able to, to get away from there. So it kind of slowly drifted away from the shore. Um, the crew had to leave the ship because it was getting crushed. And so they camped out on the sea ice um, until that is integrated too. So they made it to their lifeboats and um, they, they um, also made it to an island, dark and unhospitable, um, gloomy, godforsaken island called Elephant Island, where the whole crew waited um, for rescue that never arrived. So at that point, Shackleton decided to leave the island on, an, on, a, on a small lifeboat with a, a, a few selected crew members. And he tried something that probably goes down as one of the most, let's say, heroic deeds uh, somebody has ever, ever done. And he crossed the ocean in this, in this little boat, almost 1,500 kilometers, until they reached um, South Georgia Island. <laughs> where not only, not only had they had uh, to, to cross the ocean, but they then had to march um, across the island um, to reach civilization from where they sent uh, a rescue party to get the rest of the men back from Elephant Island. And that um, was the day when, when Ernest Shackleton rescued all of his crew members. None of them lost their lives. So um, you can read about this. And this is one of the in most interesting books I have ever read. Um, and that really gives you an insight in, into this very inspiring story um, about resilience. Now, coming back to where such resilience comes from, um, let's compare and contrast two definitions. My answer to you, this resilience comes from two things. Number one, from your mindset. And number two, it also has to do with how you manage your own emotions in the face of such shocks in the face of adversity. So it's number one mindset issue. Let's look at the definition of crisis. This is a definition from Merriam-Webster dictionary, an unstable or crucial time or state of affairs in which a decisive change is impending, especially one with a distinct possibility of a highly undesirable outcome. Yes, um, we can all understand that. Now, let me compare and contrast that with the definition of entrepreneurship, which goes like this. It's about creating value by building businesses, regardless of you know, what, whether profit, non-for-profit, non social purpose, under the following conditions, conditions of high uncertainty and severe resource constraints. Now, basically, entrepreneurship has a lot in common with crisis because you know, when you look at the definition of crisis, there's a possibility of a highly undesirable outcome, a possibility, which means risk, there's uncertainty, and highly undesirable means we will probably get into resource trouble. Um, for example, we'll get problems with customers, we will lose customers or we don't have any customers. So in other words, <laughs> what's, what's kind of the new normal for most of us is the normal, normal 
for most entrepreneurs. The conditions that they're dealing with day in, day out, the crisis that they're um, living through um, every day, almost every day, um, and uh, in quick succession um, very often. When, for example, a very important customer cancels a contract or you know, a supplier pulls out of a very, very important project, those are the things that are very familiar um, to entrepreneurs. Now, in, in, terms of, um, in terms of their skills, how do they manage in those situations then? Um, how do they manage in the face of crisis? What, what do they learn from kind of riding this roller coaster repeatedly? The roller coaster of emotions. And so this is something that I set out to, to do some research on. There's an article that was published a year ago in the Strategic Management Journal. And I wanted to share with you five techniques that, or behaviors that entrepreneurs use in order to manage their own as well as other people's emotions to build up their resilience in the face of adversity. Now, number one thing, this is about their own emotions. When you're going through a hard time, it's actually good to take a step back and don't just get focused and bogged down um, uh, with, 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 a, with, a, with a focus on the presence. But think about the longer term. Think back to where you're coming from. So I had you know, some entrepreneurs who told me that you know, we're, we're really going through a lot of trouble these days. But when we think about where we're coming from, a year ago, two years ago, what did we have? We had a piece of paper. It was a business plan. Now look at what we have today. It's true there are setbacks along the way, but over the long term, we're making progress. So focus on the long view. Give yourself perspective. The second technique that these entrepreneurs, the most successful ones, um, are using is they're considering rewards and they're focusing on rewards that go beyond economic gains. So not just money, but look at emotional rewards. Look at what you're getting beyond the, the financial payoff. So for example, in my uh, research, there was one entrepreneur who built a whiskey distillery. Now that's a very long term project because whiskey takes 10 years until it's, until it's ready to be sold if it's whiskey. Uh, and so you have to go pretty much cash flow, cash flow negative for 10 years. That's a tough, that's a tough ride. Um, but this entrepreneur, she told me that, you know, it's very tough, but at the, on the other hand, you know, it's a very exciting time. It's very, you know, I'm very passionate about this. And if I, if I think about what I could be doing instead, it would be boring. So, you know, comparing to what you could, would be doing instead, something that will also give you psychological resources. Third, with respect to other people. Um, other people, you always think about, you know, the anxiety that you're living through, other people live through as well. So the number one uh, advice here is that you have to maintain an open and transparent dialogue about other stake with other stakeholders, customers, with employees, with suppliers. It's very, very important to be transparent. For example, with your employees about the financial situation, quintessential, don't hide anything. Honesty and integrity are not to be traded. So the, the, the fourth thing is that in terms of how you come across, think about this, you know, use your emotions in terms of controlled with a control with a, with a certain control in their display. Be very generous with sharing your joy, with sharing your passion, with uh, sharing, you know, your, your excitement about, about what you're doing. But when it comes to um, when it comes to to fear, when it comes to stress, try to appear calm. It's very important because calmness conveys certainty. It's a certainty type emotion. So you know, in times of great uncertainty, you want to put something as a counterweight, which is certainty, right? Which is kind of try to be calm. You can you might paddle like a duck under the water, which is what you have to do. But over the surface, be calm. And lastly, very important, in terms of other stakeholders, share, um, like employees, customers, show consideration and support. Be kind. Treat them as people. Um, listen to them. Empathize with them. Now more than ever, 
this is extremely important. And, you know, these kind of five behaviors really stood out and distinguished um, the more successful from the less successful entrepreneurs, clearly distinguish them in our sample. Everybody's doing something, you know, along those lines. But those who pay very high conscious attention to those techniques are the ones that are successful um, in the end um, in, 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 in terms of riding out the crisis, in terms of showing resilience, in terms of, in terms of enduring um, the, the, the hardship. Now, those were the first two things I wanted to um, mention. Number one, mindset, the importance of the mindset and positivity. And number two, the importance of paying attention to emotions. Now, doing all this, um, you know, what, do you what do you deploy all these kind of actions for? Look at this number. This is from a recent um, alumni survey that Yes has launched just, I think, about 10 days ago. And um, it uh, depicts the number one issue. This is the number one issue that came out of which people, Yes alumni, are worried at the moment. Um, and this is the business model. It's not about, you know, the number one worry was not revenues. The number one worry was not hiring or, you know, retaining people. The number one worry um, was not about work-life balance, but the number one worry was about business model innovation and how you can adapt your business model to tomorrow. So in terms of business model innovation, um, you need to have a framework for how you think about doing business tomorrow. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working, um, I've been working on this now for the past 20 years, um, and this is my framework. So I'm not going to go into the details of this framework because I'm going to give you a handout um, and as part of this talk. And, and this is going to go into the details, but you know, there are four questions which are important that will help you think through, reflect on your business model, which is number one, what activities are we currently um, um, pursuing and are they important? Secondly, um, how are these activities linked? Thirdly, um, who is performing those activities? You know, should we be doing everything that we're currently doing or could we work with third parties? Could actually customers do the job? And the last question, the important question, of course, is the why. Does this all make, why does this all make sense? You know, does it create enough value for everybody involved? Um, and is there a value proposition for everybody in it? Those are the important questions regarding business model innovation. And if you're curious to learn more, um, um, I, I have a, a forthcoming book, which I will shortly kind of uh, show to you. Uh, in terms of if you're, if you're curious about how you can manage, you know, what kind of skills allow you to, um, to innovate your business model, the following things um, have come out in, a, in another research piece of mine. Number one, um, think outside of your industry, which is kind of what I call here industry spanning. Don't look inside your industry, which is what most of us are doing, but look outside. Look to companies that have nothing to do with you at the moment. You know, look to the Googles, look to the Twitters, look to completely different businesses and get inspired by how they're doing business. Second thing, is think in terms of systems. Complex system thinking is very, very important. And that's, um, it, you, 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 we have a tendency, of course, now to focus internally and, and, and focus on the efficiency um, of, our, um, uh, of our companies. Now, um, you may want to think, you want to think about the, the big, about the big picture. Um, then the last thing here is now that's something that really kind of surprised us, which is powerful centralized decision making. Um, and um, that's basically what we found was that, you know, in you, all of those com companies that we studied and that came up with innovative business models had decentralized teams and diverse teams. But at the end of the day, there was one who called the shots in terms of business model innovation. And we interpret it in the following way. Um, if you let the team make the decision about the business model innovation, not much will survive because it's not clear that everybody uh, agrees on what should be done. Um, and uh, in our cases, it's kind of a, the founder who, uh, there was one of the founders who, who finally got stood up and said, let's do this. Okay, so these are kind of the skills. As I said, um, I have a book, uh, and it's coming out in the summer. It's called Business Model Innovation Strategy. If you're curious, um, I, I recommend that as a resource to you. Um, another thing is if you're, if you're um, interested in um, kind of participating with a project, 
um, in, uh, in, a, in a course that I've created at, 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 at the IESE, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, this is where you know, ESE students work on problems that are brought by external companies, companies such as Siemens um, uh, uh, or you know, Lakasha um, or SEAT. Um, and uh, if, you have a, if you have a problem, if you have a business model issue, you would like students to work on this, look for the call for challenges over the summer. I have a number of questions here that were coming in, lots of interesting questions. I'll get to them. Let me just kind of summarize. Okay, so key learnings. Let me summarize what you've uh, what you've heard me say. Key learnings from entrepreneurs. You know, from what I can from what I can tell. Number one, number one importance is kind of adopt an entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial mindset. Think opportunity. Every problem is also an opportunity. Number two, show resilience. Don't give up, even if the going gets tough. Take inspiration from Ernest Shackleton. He did not give up. Many entrepreneurs know how important this is. Uh, if you give up, there's no business, you don't get a second chance. But if you keep going, you may find um, a way of how to get out of the current um, uh, problems. Then number three is manage emotions carefully and thoughtfully. Tough skills. Think emotions and, and think about the behaviors that I've tried to um, um, share with you are very um, uh, good and useful. And then lastly, rethink your business model. You know, now is the time. Um, now is the time to react, to reflect on whether your business, your today's business model um, will be apt for tomorrow and will be the best one for the future. And in fact, don't just think about it as a, as, as a one shot thing, but think about this as a continuous process. So you, in fact, it would be good if you um, could develop a business model innovation strategy. Once again, this is something that, you know, all of those five things that we, that we're um, taught day in, day out by um, the, the great entrepreneurs um, who, are, who are doing, well, or you might say doing their magic, but who are doing actually doing their work and building companies all around the world. All right, so I have a couple of questions. Let me see. So Ganesh asked, what are the psychological resources you are referring to? So psychologic, by, by psychological resources, I mean kind of the energy. You know, I'm asking entrepreneurs, um, what, one of the questions I'm asking them is, you know, what, what gets you out of bed every morning? You know, given to what, what many of them go through, um, we call these sometimes, at yes, we call these near-death experiences. Essentially, you have a runway of uh, three weeks with, you know, with cash, and you know that after the three weeks, the game will be over. So what gets them out of bed every morning? What's this energy? That's what I mean by psychological resources. The, the willpower and the energy to put to give it their best shot. That's the, the psychological resources of the of the entrepreneur. Um, and another nice question, Ignacio asked this question: How can you protect yourself from the very negative environment of news opinions around us? Very good question because it happens to all of us, and it happened to it, it happened it, it happens to me as well. I can tell you how I lifted myself up in the past um, a few weeks. One thing is talk to entrepreneurs. Talk to entrepreneurs. Um, and I've had a, a series of conversations over the past two weeks. And the kind of energy and optimism those people transmit is very contagious. Um, so, you know, talk to, to a lot of people who are supporting entrepreneurship, angel investors as well. And then also read books like this one because it shows to you that even under the most severe and dire circumstances, it's possible. It's possible to, to, it's possible to resist. It's possible to endure. Okay, more questions. Could you tell us the relevance of corporate governments to crisis management? Well, that's a very good point. I, um, that's a very good point because it allows me to tell you that all of the um, talks that we give in this series are recorded and they will be available for you to, uh, for viewing. And the corporate governance uh, issue was uh, an issue that Professor Jordi Canals talked about uh, in, a, in a very good talk last week on Thursday. So look at it on your LinkedIn account. Okay, other question, let's see. Entrepreneurs must be prepared for other entrepreneurs to enter that turf as disruptors. Um, is there going to be, is this going to be the test of resilience and EQ? 
Yes. Um, yes, this is one of the challenges that entrepreneurs are dealing with, which is com uh, competition. Um, but let me tell you that, it, you know, in, in my work with entrepreneurs, in my daily work with entrepreneurs, and this is you know, really why I love my job, because I have this you know, privilege of interacting with, with entrepreneurs um, who are very, in my view, are very special people by what they do, not, you know, what, not what their DNA is, but by what they do, how they act. Um, and, um, you know, when they build companies, um, their number one concern is not always competition. I mean, competition is something that they keep in mind. Of course, you have to put this in the business plan because in the, at the end of the day, you want to build a company um, that creates a competitive advantage. That's true. But I think the first thing on an entrepreneur's mind at least in the early days of business building, is value creation and assembling the resources, making, making the project, making the venture, making the opportunity happen. Um, so, of course, then when you're dealing with competition, um, it, you know, it can lead to the kind of blows and it can lead to the, the, the kind of crises um, that, that we've been talking about. Um, and... Um, yeah, and then deploy, and then deploy the, 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 the various techniques that I have uh, talked about and that you can read a little bit more about in the handout that I gave to you. And those of you who are really very academically interested, you can also, of course, look at the, um, at the academic articles and forget the introduction section, forget the literature review, but only focus on the findings. Because I, you know, in my work, I'm, um, I'm using the case method and so the findings are a very lively description of, 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 of cases. Now, somebody asked whether I can show the cover of the book again, which is this one. It's called Endurance, Shackleton's Incredible Voyage. The author is Alfred Lansing. And I must say, this book I, I owe to an, uh, to an entrepreneur and, and venture capitalist who uh, was a guest speaker in one of my classes. And it was his Bible and he held it up and he said, you know, when I invest in people, I look for people like Shackleton, people who can sail through the very, very rough waters. And I just found out that he named his new company after, after this man. So it's a very good read. Um, and um, I hope you found some, some nuggets in this talk that you found it um, interesting. Um, once again, let's find inspiration from the entrepreneurs um, of, of which there are many around us. Help them if you can, because they too, of course, are going through a very difficult time. Um, but I think it's a give and take. You help them, they will give, certainly give you something very valuable back. So I think um, I'm now more or less at the end um, of our talk. So um, remember, I should, I should tell you that remember that this session will be available for viewing on demand as li and, uh, on LinkedIn as soon as the live streaming is over. Um, tomorrow, we'll have another talk at 4 p.m. Um, here at Central European Time in Spain. Um, and this is where my colleague, Philippe Mocoso, will look at the tourist industry um, with two guest speakers, Raul Gonzalez and Jordi Mestre, who both lead large hotel groups. And of course, um, this is going to be hugely interesting as well. The session will be in Spanish. And for more information, I invite you to visit the ESA website, www.iese.edu and click on our open access resource page um, for information on all our upcoming online sessions, as well as a number of resources that help you with crisis management strategies. Thank you very much for your attention.